Ark has ascended, and with that I set my sights on taking down one of the island's formidable bosses. To add a twist, I've compressed each day into a mere 20 minutes, raising the stakes to all new heights. Can I conquer the odds and emerge victorious, or will the relentless passage of time be my ultimate adversary? G'day everybody, Chaotic here, and welcome to the Ultimate 100 Days Challenge. I awaken on a familiar yet completely different looking beach. Damn, this is looking gorgeous. I carry on and I pick up some stones, and then I toughen my knuckles on a dodo so I can gather wood from a tree. I then begin to gear up with tools and finally some clothes. In the morning I was cooking up some food and preparing to make a journey so I could craft a spyglass. I make a torch and after that I notice I can equip it to my belt and then I can have some hands free gathering in the light. Nice! I then notice a new timer on the campfire. Fuel time remaining. That will come in handy. I head towards the nearest mountain with Crystal, and I come across a baby trike strolling the beach. Ah, how cute! I carry on and make my way into the jungle. I get ambushed by some ants, and this time I'm ready, and I quickly take them out. After journeying for a while, I finally make it to the top of the mountain, and I start gathering Crystal. Ah, that is just PTSD and sound file. Whose dumbass idea was that? Well, now that I finally have a spyglass, it's time to set up, and I get down the basics. A foundation, campfire, a mortar and pestle, and I come across and tame a moss chops and her baby. As you can tell, I messed up the breeding settings a little bit here, and it instantly grew up. I'll fix this later. I carry on and I take Choppy out to get some hide and explore around for a little bit. I return to my natural causes inspired base and I craft a forge. And I begin smashing some metal rocks to build a smithy and upgrade my tools. By nighttime, I had a crossbow and arrows. And as I was making some parachutes, a local trickster picked me up for a ride. I guess we're off to get some tacos. Thankfully, though, I was just crafting some parachutes. After being picked on by the Titano for a bit, I headed out and I looked for a pteranodon, but I was quickly distracted by an otter. After killing a coelocanth and picking it up, I was ambushed by piranhas and they ate my coelocanth, those dicks. So I used one of them as my taming food, but unfortunately I overstayed my welcome. I wasn't long finding a decent pteranodon up the beach. While I was waiting for it to tame up, I headed back to get a saddle crafted and I stumbled upon a baby Pego. So I tamed it and named it, and I carried on to go make that saddle. Once the Pteranodon was up, I saddled it up and I named it You Do. You know, as in You Will Do. Now, I need a place to call home. And I kinda got a place in mind, so with Ya Do, we took flight. There's a spot on the other side of the Redwoods, where I built on my old Ultimate March Let's Play series way back when. After flying through the night and well into the morning, I arrived. And I could immediately tell this place is looking different from Ark Survival Evolved. Well, there's nothing much I can do besides getting to work, so I started smashing some rocks and I placed down my first foundations. And I noticed that the grass disappears and reappears when I place and pick up foundations, which is so damn cool! I was so sick of sticking up through the foundations. I slap down some more foundations and then I get to work building up some stone corners with little wooden half walls across the center. And then I added railings as kind of windows. And then a nice looking thatch roof. Very simple build. I know, but damn, it doesn't look that bad considering. As I was finishing up, an RG came in to say hi. After taking it out and gloating my victory a little bit, I finished setting up the rest of my base. I explored around for a while enjoying the view, and I even found a 130 Theri. I'm gonna have to come back and tame her later. 
I scoured some amazing looking ruins, and then I hit up a green drop. I headed up towards the volcano, and I seen that the trees were kind of looking burnt. I gave it a quick smack as a test to see if I could gather some charcoal like on Crystal Isles. Sadly, I didn't get any. I then stumbled upon a level 5 Anki, and this was kind of saddening because I knew I would never get it home alive without the use of cryopods. I headed back to the volcano so I could grab some metal on day 10. And after I grabbed some, I heard a Giga kind of chirping away in the distance. Curious, I looked around, and I couldn't find it. So maybe it's under the mesh? Well, there's a car char tail sticking out of the wall there, so yeah, typical arc behavior. I carried on exploring, and then I found a 135 Iguanodon. And I figured, eh, why not? Let's tame it. It was up in the morning and I named her Bolt. And once we got home, there was another Argent invading my personal space. Bolt and I headed to Metal Mountain in the morning. And after having some trouble finding our way up, we managed to gather a ton of metal. And I headed home where I wanted to set up some water to my house. And after looking at it and its description, it says it's now wireless? Wait, what? Water is was was never wired. Do they kind of mean pipeless? I craft up an intake and a tap, and I place them down, and nothing. Hmm, what's going on here? I look at the intake while equipped, and I notice a big blue bubble. This must mean it's range. So after placing it down again, I check, and s still nothing. I check the piping information and I see a show range button. Ah, there we go. I move the water into range and booyah! I got water via wireless... <laughs> okay, pipeless water. I can't even say it. Alright, no. I headed out to find those gathering dinos that I'll need. A Anki, a Dodicarus, and a Mammoth. I stumbled upon a small herd of mammoths with a 135 in the mix. So after placing some billboards, it's time to get him in the trap. But he seems to know it's a trap. And he stops just before going in and goes around it. It's nice that Wildcard made them smarter, but this makes my trapping a little bit more difficult. Oh well, fuck it. I started pelting it with arrows while riding Bolt and avoided him as best as I could until he finally collapsed onto the ground. Once he was finished taming up, I named him Manioth. Now, to get him home. This is gonna suck, but the pathing for Dino seems to be working really good. So I carry on fighting my way down to the river. Once I was down there, it was pretty much all downhill from there. Holy shit! Fuck me, that scared the shit out of me. I get tackled by everybody's favorite micro raptor, and then I run into some raptors, and dillos, and carnos, and then finally a theory took offense to me. Ah, oh, these stupid fucking micro raptors! Let me. No! Fuck! So much for hardcore! Ah! Well, so much for trying not to die. Fly back with Yadu to help the other two fight off that theory. Now that I've saved them and recovered my stuff, it's time to get this mammoth home before something bad happens. Oh, that's an alpha raptor. That's an alpha raptor. Run. Sakes, Manith, move! I somehow managed to fight away the Alpha Raptor, and the other one took off for some other reason. And as we we're running, the Terror Bird is very persistent, and Bolt unfortunately falls. Rest in peace, buddy.
fuck, not the mammoth! What it cost? Everything. No, oh, we're losing the fucking mammoth after all! What the fuck? After all that bullshit, I decided I needed a much needed break so I could calm down. I can't afford a new keyboard. Once I calm down and come back, I recover my stuff when a Diplo decided to try and cheer me up. Um, I? <laughs> I'm not even on his tail. Like, I'm not even on it. Woo 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 hoo yeehaw, yeehaw. <laughs> What the fuck kind of shit is this? Oh shit, you put me in front of the fairy, you dumbass! Or was that just the ploy to get me killed again? No 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 Fucker Hey, it's a preserving bin. That's actually useful. That's not a blueprint. That's an actual structure. Holy shit. I got a crop plot instead of a BP. Oh, fuck. I made up some walls and some other things so I could make a cheap RG trap. And I set off to try and tame an RG when I stumbled upon a baby dodo. So I scooped him up and I took him home. Yes, I changed my breeding settings by now, but it's still way too high. I'm working on it. Hold on. I, for some reason, decided to head to the Redwoods Mountains so I could look for an RG. I quickly regretted it. Really? Really? Give me a bunt. Give me a bunt. Oh no! Got the raptor. Go eat the raptor! On my way back to my corpse, I seen an Equus. I said, well, fuck it, let's tame that. I ended up having some problems taming it, but I eventually managed to get it by nightfall. Ah, uh, oh, silver, away! Once I had my stuff, I moseyed on up the mountain, looking for an RG, when I heard a Rex. Then I wandered towards the sound and I seen a 115 RG. Yeah, that'll do for now. And then I seen a Rex jump off. So I followed it down, and I find out there's another damn Rex! After quickly regaining the high ground, I take a look. It's a 130! That means your baby's a 130. Yeah, same first, that's the same first baby I've seen in the carnival. Female juvenile 130 as well. I'm gonna have to come back and get those two later. But first, I need that RG. I set up my little trap and I lured it in. Easy peasy. Guess the flyers don't have better pathing. Oh well. Once she was down, I hunted for some prime meat. Once the RG was up, I asked my chat and they named her Bon Jovi and I headed home, where I was promptly double ambushed. Oh, he ate my dodo. I killed my dodo, he didn't even give it a name yet. Stuck, stuck, stuck. Horse is stuck. No, no, leave. My horse! Hello! 
Rip the Equus and the Dodo? I jump down in the morning and I get enough chitin to make an RG saddle. And I seen a Gigantopithecus, so I gave her a berry. And then I seen another horse, so I decided to tame it too. It took most of the day, but I finally managed to tame it. Horsey. And then I finished taming the Gigantopithecus. I killed some bugs and I fought a Diplo so I could get some hide and chitin to make that RG saddle. And then I made my way back home. I knocked out a copy and I used the prime meat from the Diplo to tame it up. I got a copy. Uh, change name. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go with the other one. Compy miss. Compy must prime. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Compy there. No. Compy must prime. Blue. Compy bots roll out. The over after. I detoured to the long way home to avoid that alpha rafter. What the fuck? I didn't hit any of you assholes. Go away. You don't get to change your mind 10 minutes later and go, oh yeah, that dude hit me. We should go kick his ass. No, that's not how this works. Once I got away from those little shits, I ran into an old friend. And it did not end well for me. Oh shit! Dead, George. He's dead. Let's go. With only George left, we didn't get far before running into a pack of raptors. Oh, the horse is gone. Spent all that time taming it just for it to fucking die. Oh shit! No, 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 no! And they chased me all the way home. Copy must prime. Ah. Fucking raptors. Spawning back in my base, I'm now in a terrible predicament. I equip some hide armor and whistle my Argent closer to get ready to attack. And suddenly Bon Jovi pulled a Leroy and went in before I was ready. So I opened the door to whistle her away. Did I run into my house? I attempt to run and jump on a rock, but alas, they got me again. <laughs> oh, fucking bullshit. Like, I couldn't run away. They just kept knocking me back. Ugh. Why am I being so bad at this game? Is it because I'm tired? Like, what the fuck? That can't be it. I'm not that tired. Womp, womp, womp. He's in my fucking house! Get out of my house! Come on, boys, follow me! Follow me! Follow! As long as I keep running, they can't keep up! Let's go! Run! Run! We have found the solution! Sacrifice yourself. I have way too much stamina. Ouch. Well, at least they're away from the stuff now. Okay, now we got another four minutes to fucking wait. 
Now that the raptor's been led away, I respawn and find that they broke both my campfire and my preserving bin. Those dicks! I recover my stuff and I equip Bon Jovi's saddle. All is finally right in the world again. I then take a moment and get revenge on one of those alpha raptors, and I immediately found a Dodicarus. But it's only level 10. Guess I can't complain, so I took him home to trank him out. Well, well, well. She is slightly better. She was up by the next day and I named her, and we went out to work immediately. After I was done smashing rocks, I went out to explore again and see the new changes. I find these amazing looking ruins on top of a mountain. But sadly, you can't bust apart the rubble to make room to live in it. On the 23rd day, I went on a massive metal run to stock back up, and then I set off to find myself an Anki, because screw harvesting by hand. I searched and searched, and eventually led me to Herbivore Island, where I found a 135 Anki. And oh, by the way, new mods are now starting to pop up. This one here is called Utilities Plus. It has reusable parachutes, bolas, etc. But what I downloaded it for was to make a craftable early game version of Wildcard's new tech binoculars. Because fuck fighting the Alpha Overseer to use them. Because in my line of work, I will never get to use them. The Arc Conditions dinos are now also finally spawning in. This mod was active from the start, but for some reason there was complications and it didn't work. While waiting for the Yankee to tame up, I also decided to do some tests with the baby dinos. With Bon Jovi, I was able to pick up the baby trike. And I got curious, if I dragged it far enough away from its mom, could I be able to claim it? And after flying across the ocean and landing on a beach, it looks like the only way we're going to be able to claim them is to kill or tame the parents. It was an interesting thought though. Once my Yankee was up, I named her Spanky HD. On my way home, I picked up a yellow drop and I got my first blueprint and some doors that I used once I got home. Now all I need is another mammoth. Rest in peace, Manioth. So I journeyed back to the snow biome and I took a look around and I stumbled upon a sheep. So I scooped her up. Okay, I saw its baby walking around. Where was it? I don't see the baby. The baby was there. There's the baby right there. Well, I'm not gonna say no to a free baby Ovis. Okay, we got the baby Ovis. Run him with the baby. So I dragged him home and I started raising my first ASA Ovis. And yes, I finally managed to fix the maturation, but it's still gonna need a little bit more adjustment. And then went back onto my hunt for a decent mammoth. And I'll admit, I'm not used to these island spawns with their terrible levels. I've always used the better spawns mod in Ark Survival Evolved, so it was taking me quite a bit longer than I'm used to to find a decent level. Needing a small break, I went home and I started going through the engrams so I could upgrade my crafting. I then built a fabricator, and it's really cool how these auto square up with the walls now. That is so awesome. Day 30 started off with some fun new emotes while walking. And honestly, walking is the best new feature if I'm honest. I absolutely love it. I then crafted and placed a beer barrel, and then I hit up some drops while attempting to find some beaver dams, for some paste of course, so I could upgrade to a grill and cook up my new sheep. Hi Mr. Bear, I thought you were a rock, my bad. Giving up on finding a dam, I went back to searching for a mammoth. My ADHD is a bitch sometimes, but it paid off this time. <laughs> 145! I place down some sleeping bags for just in case I mess up, and I perch up on a big rock to stay out of its range. That is rude. Oh shit. Oh. Well, so much for that idea. We had a little bit of a back and forth for a while, but soon it was starting to get way too cold, and I had to bail out of the region or risk freezing to death. I just Seven, barely made it to warmer six. temperatures in the morning. Oh, went up to six degrees. We just barely made it. We barely made it. Barely made it. And I started moving towards home so I could heal up when suddenly the temperatures dropped again. 
It was relentless, and I ran out of time, and I quickly crafted a sleeping bag. Fuck yeah, just in time. <laughs> Woo. I wake up and find that I might have dropped that sleeping bag in the wrong spot. Shit. But thankfully, all the points that I would have put into movement speed, I put into fortitude, and they have just saved me. Totally gonna pass out. 26, 25, okay, we're good. I headed back to my mammoth, and we traded even more blows until I was finally victorious, and the mammoth collapsed from exhaustion. I gathered some berries from Mammoth 2.0, and I headed back to base to wait for him to wake up. In the morning, I finally found some pace, too, and I crafted this damn sexy new grill. Good job to whoever created this piece of art. I am a little disappointed, though, that Little Steaks didn't show up on top as it was cooking. Aw, oh, I should show Little Steaks on there. Come on, wild card. After that, I tried to get my sheep into the house, yeah, but he was really fluffy, so I removed the door to fit him in. I then seen a yellow drop coming down. Is this what a ring drop looks like? Dude, that is so cool. He was in it. Whoa! A 150 armored Thylus saddle? Fucking Jesus Christ. No fucking regrets opening that. Well, guys, I guess we're gonna go tame a Thyla the next time we come on. Damn! What the fuck? That came from a ring drop. A cryopod mod has now shown up on the mod list and I decided to give it a test. Don't worry, I don't use it for long as it's broken to all hell. So I begin searching around for Kairuku. I headed to the icebergs, but I don't see any at this time. So I went to the shore and it took me a little bit to find them, but once I did, oh boy, was it a mess. Grabbing and killing them glitched them out and you weren't able to harvest them. So I kicked them around with the RG for a bit and that really wasn't working either. So I pulled out my crossbow and executed them one by one. Once home, I crafted up five cryopods and then I crafted and placed a generator and a lamp to brighten the place up a bit. A raptor came into my base so I knocked it out and I tamed it up so I could test these cryopods. And I quickly discovered a duping glitch with them. Don't worry, I ain't cheating. Chaotic ain't about that life. But other than that, it all seems to be kinda okay. So I set off to bring home my new mammoth. Once home, I noticed a new glitch. My inventory on all of my storage was gone. But it's still registering that there are items in it. Nat suggested I pick it up, and that did not work. So I restarted the game by crashing it. Once I get back on, all of my stuff was back except for the fabricator, because the game saved as I crashed it. Rip everything that was in it. Also, I hadn't noticed yet, but both my sheep and my raptor have been deleted as well due to the cryopod mod deleting things on World Reset. In the morning, I placed down a giant gate that I got out of a drop, and I barricaded myself in with spiked walls. No more unexpected guests, except for the Argies, because they can just fly over it. After that, I crafted up some metal billboards and a couple of bear traps, and I finished off the day by gathering a ton more metal with Spanky. So much better than harvesting it with my pick. I set up a new smelting area outside the front door, so that way I don't have to transport all the raw metal into the house bit by bit. In the morning, I went back out to the Redwoods, and I found a baby Dodicarus wandering around with his mother. So I did the darkest thing I could think of, and I orphaned the baby, and then claimed it. Now that I'm also here at the Redwoods Mountain, I set my sights on that female Rex and her infant from earlier. I placed down a bear trap, and once she's in the bear trap, I attempt to place down my billboards. But she chewed her way out of that bear trap very quickly. So after some unneeded coaxing, I managed to trick her into the billboards and trap her in. But it wasn't long before Art crashed again. Now I know I haven't mentioned this much at this point, but I've crashed and rolled back more times than I care to count. On average, 20 minute days should be about 33 hours, and by the time I was done this playthrough, I have 50 hours in art. So that's a lot of days that I repeated. 
it's incredibly annoying and wildcard has been working on it so hopefully by the time this video is done and i get back to recording the next one they fixed it but yeah, i'm not holding my breath and i'm gonna be honest they got a lot of work ahead of them once i get back in i hovered over her and i placed down the billboards trapping her once again and she was finally down and sleeping by the morning i tried claiming her baby but it would appear that i need to at least finish taming her hunted down some prime meat and then I gave it to my new pretty girl. Instead of waiting around, I searched for a decent Thyla. I called off all the weaker ones as I found them, and shortly after that, I noticed that my Rex was up, so I returned to find her just chilling there. But her baby was gone. Incredibly disappointing. I carried on my search for a Thyla, but it was starting to get dark, so I returned home. I asked my good old buddy Crow what his favorite rock band was. And such a simple question turned into a non-simple answer. All right, Crow, what's your favorite rock band? That highly depends on what day you ask me. Well, I am asking you today. <laughs> okay, well, here's the thing. A lot of people have perceived rock in multiple different ways due to how many types of genres there have. So can we be a bit specific? Like, give me an example of what kind of rock you're referring to. Classic. 80s, like, 90s. Give me an example then. Give me an example then. Um, I could give you a multitude of examples. We got like Bon Jovi all the way through to ACDC. Okay, so okay, now, so now I understand what bracket of rock we're talking about. Uh... I just gave you a wide variety of brackets. <laughs> I was just asking. I've heard the name of Rex. And somebody are, like people have been naming my shit after rock creatures. So I was asking you, what was your favorite rock band? Mm. Well, that really was a the thing is now I gotta go through the catalog. Alright, give me a rock band. The first one that tops to pops to the top of your head. That wasn't what I said earlier. Okay, okay. Well, a, a rock band that immediately comes to my head is Metallica. Boom. Thank you. <laughs> You're making my simple question so. It's just like, well, if we're gonna go in depth. I was like, give me a library name, and you were like, oh, and we were like ten minutes before we came up with Royal. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, okay, I take these things very seriously. You couldn't tell. I love you, Crow. Never change, bud. Never change. Found my underwear floating in the morning above my base. How the hell did I get there? After unequipping my pants, it inadvertently recovered them onto my body. So at least I fixed that glitch. Now that that was figured out, I flew into the Redwoods to start my search for Thylas, and immediately... A 150 female Thyla? God damn it! Oh yeah, lord! I headed back to base and quickly slapped down my billboard. I dropped her in and I crafted up some more darts and I begin the process of sending her to Dreamland. Once she was down, I went into my house to butcher my sheep. And this is when I realized that the sheep was gone. Deleted by the cryopod mod. Oh, I have begrudgingly spawned one in to replace it. After butchering this new sheep up, I then cooked all of its sweet, delicious mutton. And I gave it to my new sexy beast. In the morning waiting for her to tame up, I imprinted my baby Dodicarus. I spent a good chunk of time waiting around and watching this wild theory get wrecked by my spiked walls. After the theory died, my tree kitty finally got up. My thyla's up. And I equipped that god tier saddle that I found to her. Then I asked Nat to name her. Tina the Thyla. That is a gorgeous name for a gorgeous thyla, and I can't wait to wreck some dinos with her. Shortly after that, my frames went to shit, so I restarted Ark. And though I hadn't noticed yet, my baby Dodic was deleted after the restart. I checked Tina's stats, and I'm impressed by them. 44 levels in the hell. Not bad. Granted, with the lack of speed, it could be better, but it's not bad. And I headed out to level her up. I carried on leveling Tina well into the night of day 42 and a Rex with a baby spawned in. An easy breeder for Metallica. After logging off for the night, I logged back in to find that both of my Rexes were deleted. Oh no, the cryopod thing deleted it. Oh. 
can I just have something nice? I wasn't that good of a Rex, but can I just have something nice? Uh, I don't even remember what I named it. Rip. Oh, it was Metallica. It was Metallica. Metallica's gone. It's been deleted. I'm stuck with the question. Do I bring it back? I just spawn in a new Rex. This, this cryopod mod is starting to kill my spirits. I forgot that I had that baby in the moment, but I did give myself a new female Rex to replace Metallica. Don't you just love early access glitches? I know I do! I named her and then I noticed a purple drop outside my base. Also, being sick of these cryopods deleting my tams, I dropped them on the ground and I went out to do some sightseeing. When I came across an otter in the swamp, not really wanting to risk dying to a capro taming up this otter, I placed a marker on the map to come back later and scoop it up with my RG. Spoilers, I forgot about the otter and never come back. After raiding some beavers of their belongings, I keep traveling around and hunting down rexes looking for a high level buck, slaying all the weak rexes along the way. And after searching high and low and everywhere in between, I find myself staring at Carno Island and saying, fuck it, let's go for a swim. Seems like a good way to get eaten by sharks or worse yet, jellyfish. And I can't see because the water's all green. Oh God. Oh, there's a shark. That ain't terrifying. It makes weird noises. Okay, I'm swimming faster than the shark. It changed the sound for the icky, ickies. Okay, that's good. Hello, Carno Island, my old friend. Hopefully there ain't a good Rex here. Or I'm gonna have to make a raft and bring it home again. I find a 130 female Rex on the other side and I decide, well, I guess I'll tame it. And it took quite a bit to get her down running around on foot. As she completely ignored my billboards, forcing me to just trank her off the back of Tina. And it was a very dizzifying experience. Spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You will spin me right round, baby, right round. There you go, you're good. Down, here go. Now that she was finally taking a nap, I came across a 115 male and a 150 female. A shame I was so impatient because now I don't got enough tranks to tame either one of them. The female Rex was up in the morning and her stats were worse than what I already had. So I left her there while I went to take a look in the Carno cave. It took a little bit of shimmying to get Tina in there, but I managed to make it inside. Dude, is it echoing in here? Oh, wow. One of them giving me rabies right off the hop. It's a dick move, but it is what it is. Looks like I got the rabies. I looked down after dealing with the bats. That is a lot of bats. Like, that is way too many bats. Way too many. Look at them all. Like, look at them all down there in front of... Holy shit.
Yeah, we're gonna have to come back. Make sure we got healing brews and stuff, because we're not gonna be able to fight them all. Oh, please don't crash. Okay, it's just loaded. I step back outside to find a vicious cold snap, and I quickly make a sleeping bag and await my fate. But to freeze to death, but a place don't know. Sleeping bag. That's funny. I freeze to death, and when I respawn in, the temperature instantly goes back to survivability. Jesus fuck. After reawakening, I get my Rex to follow me, and we head home. Whether or not she makes it, I do not really care. But it is good practice for when I get a Rex that I actually want. As we are swimming across, a shiver of Megs begin to chew on us. Hurry up, Rex. Why are you swimming so slow? Got a Megalodon chasing me. Not fucking fun. Will the Rex survive the journey home? <laughs> Hurry up! Get out of the water! Once we get to shore, we get ambushed by some aloes, and she's already looking like she's got one foot in the grave. The journey didn't get any easier as we soon came across not one, but two Alpha Raptors. What the fuck? It's one of the Alpha Raptors! Holy shit! It's like this game knows, and it goes, hey, fuck you, Chaotic. And once they were dealt with, I checked her health. And yeah, she is not in good shape. We headed down the river towards home. The game is seemingly giving us a little reprieve. Dude, it is so awesome to look behind you after running through a bunch of shit. And your tame, that's on follow, is literally right there, just keeping up. Until it opened up, and I noticed that a fairy is chasing my Rex. Now that we're almost home, I'm thinking, this is where the fun begins, as 100% of my losses were in this vicinity. And to my surprise, there were no surprises. Home sweet home. Knowing I'm nearly halfway through already, I gotta kick it into gear, and I headed back out to find a male Rex. Any level will do. And by the morning, I find a level 60 male Rex being picked on by a 150 Carno. Sorry, Tia, but I'm gonna have to kill it and his babies to save this Rex. After I save him, I begin peppering him with pranks, and he went down dramatically, knocking all the trees over. That is so cool! He wasn't long taming up, and I named him. Good Rex block. Dang. Using my newfound skills, I made my way home, challenged by Micro Raptors, a Carno, and his friend, two more fucking alpha raptors, and oh look, a third one! I think those alphas might be over spawning a little bit. I get the two of them doing what they do on the Discovery Channel, and I wasn't long getting my first egg. I put the egg down by my forgers, and it was shortly after that it hatched into something useless. And well, you know how I deal with useless dinos. While waiting for another egg, I took Bon Jovi and Spanky out for a quick metal run, and we returned with a boatload worth of metal. Well, I guess technically an RG load? On day 50, I went out to get some polymer, and I attempted to find some pearls for electronics, but I couldn't see them glowing in the shallows where I would normally find some. Not sure if Wildcard changed their location or not, I dove in and I harvested a bunch of fiber? That is new. I attempted to get some pearls from the trilobite, but it glitched out on me and I wasn't able to harvest it. So I went out in search of more beaver dams, as that seems to be the only reliable way at the moment to get pearls. Don't worry, I do find that the pearls just no longer glow and they're just hard to see. They look like rocks. 
I stopped my home for a minute and I seen a baby Rex with all the stats that I wanted as a male. So I named him Stats M. I know, original, very unique. And I carried on while he was growing up. After spending two days looking for beaver dams, I got a massive whopping 39 pearls. Woo! Fuck yeah, we're rich. All I need now is some crystal, and yeah, not sorry. And boom, I now have one air conditioner. That's the end game level shit that I needed right there. After grilling up some of my baby Rexes, mm, oh, ho, 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 Rexville, I crafted up some more lamps to brighten up the place, and finally a cooking pot, so I could make up those much needed healing brews for caves. And I quickly discovered the most outrageous thing. Dyes don't require extra ingredients anymore, and will just auto-craft off of berries. So now I have to disable auto-crafting just to make healing brews. Wildcard, if you're listening right now, please, for the love of the Overseer, please disable auto-crafting of dyes or something. And while you're at it, oh pretty please make this cooking pot irrigate from your pipeless water taps. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Anyways, so my next goal is to get to level 89 and craft an industrial cooking pot for that sweet, sweet irrigation. I went out weakening dinos with my thyla and delivering the final blow with my crossbow, funneling the experience to me first. After a while, my Stats M Rex was finally grown up and ready to begin breeding with his mother and start making me some boss babies. And hopefully I'll get some more breeding females so I can get even more babies out even faster. I decided to take a moment and hit up the central cave to see if my thyla could fit in so I could get my first artifact needed for the brood mother. She couldn't fit, so I'm gonna need a strong cave dino that can fit. Hmm, I guess would be a baryonyx. This slender boy can fit into most caves and hold their own, so that will be my next goal. Get a breeding pair of baryonyxes so I can run all the broodmother caves with them. But in the meantime, it's back to leveling up. Well, if the Microraptors will let me. Aw, oh, you fucking cocksucking Microraptor motherfucker. Everything's gonna go black. That was close. I could have lost Tina here. I was keeping an eye out for Baryonyxes as I go, and speaking of, one ambushed me. With his Capro buddy. Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. And before I knew it in all the chaos, I was hacking a Sarko with my hatchet. I really need to get some better melee weapons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Back at home, I'm starting to get my army growing. Imprinting them is just annoying without cryopods. Random roulette. Are they gonna want to cuddle? Or are they gonna want kibble ending their imprinting process? Who knows? After getting a few rexes growing and imprinted to the best I'm possibly able to at this time because I don't have kibble, I take a look out from my base and I see a 110 baryonyx swimming around. And it's got damn good stats for a level 110. I try to get a hit on it and convince it to come to land because they have a stun while they're swimming in the water and I'm not stupid enough to get near it. Thankfully though, it wasn't long getting angry and coming right for me. I got it knocked out very quickly. Go down, go down, go down. Yes, they do torpor run, but they'll come back and try and hit you again. I try to kill some saber tooth salmon without accidentally harvesting them. So when I get them down, I can pull out my sickle and harvest it for their amazing prime fish meat. Did I not bring my sickle? Where the fuck did I put the sickle? What the fuck? No! What the fuck? Doing okay? My thylus somehow got stuck in my wall. 
Oh! Finally the wall threw me out. Okay, we're good. Nice. Alright. What should we call the Baryonyx? With 39 to fucking health and 40 to melee and only being level 110. Now that is what they call a beast of <laughs> a Baryonyx. Like, yeah. That is insane. Um, like, even in ASE's terms, that would still be an amazing plum 10. Even though, like, like with the movement speed set, like, it still would have gotten a good amount to health and make, and that's just insane. See, it was really nice about having all this fucking fortitude. I got hit like three times by Truodons and I am not passing out. After hatching and imprinting some more Rexes, I went out to gain some levels and to see whatever else I could find. We stumbled upon a low level female Baryonyx and I decided that Beast needs a date. Once home, I set them up for some hanky panky time and I continued hatching my baby Rexes. In the morning, my first Baryonyx was finally born. Well. It's got bad stats. The second one also had bad stats, but it was quicker at running away. My 10th boss Rex was born, so I'm at least making some progress there. I carried on with my egg hatching when I finally got a good berry for caving. Now to get myself something I've never tamed before, a Rhinognatha. These giant ass bugs have this amazing ability to carry dinos up to the size of a Rex and I am going to need one without cryopods. I marched my female Rex that I tamed on Carno Island through the swamp attempting to find one, but I had some slight visibility issues. Suddenly, I heard something not too far away. Is that one? I munched away the trees and moved in that direction. Oh, there's a rhino. It found me. It was a male, exactly what I was looking for. Now, if you don't know, these ugly bastards have a very unique taming mechanic. You first have to unalive a male and collect its pheromones. So, I got that first part done. Yay! I then have to find a female and beat it to within an inch of its life. From there, you force feed your dino to eat the pheromone, and the female will then latch and lay an egg inside your dino. From there, it'll gestate and require some care until it hatches. Then it will kill your dino, leaving you with a brand new baby bug. While healing up my Rex a bit, I accidentally ate one of the pheromones. Now it's a good thing I now have two of them. So I continue on searching for a female, but with no luck, I just return home to get my RG. But I crashed once again. Now, this crash here has somehow fucked with my OBS settings. No idea how, as I didn't change a damn thing. So, for the next couple of days, because I didn't notice my recording is now a little bit wonky, I'm just gonna breeze over what I did and get through this section as quickly as possible because, well, you only see about half the screen. So, here we go. I leveled up Beast Jr. for a bit and I took out my Rex for another walk so I could find a female Rhino. Remembering that I wanted my RG, I went back home and got it and I had the Rex follow me through the swamp so I had a bird's eye view. I seen a shimmer in the trees on the red ob side of the swamp and it was just another male. After killing it off, I flew back towards the redwoods and boom, there was a low level female. I landed my RG on a rock it should be safe there, and I hopped onto the Rex and I take one last look at Bon Jovi with hesitation. Will she be safe? <sighs> yeah, it's fine. She'll be fine. She's good. I'll only be gone for a minute. I move over and I start weakening her down below 10% health. And I force feed the pheromones to my Rex. It's now up to her. And I get the dreaded red text. Bon Jovi was just killed by a fucking Titanoboa. At that exact moment, she also laid an egg into the Rex. But I was so distracted, I didn't even notice it right away, and I seen her flying away. Hey, where are you going? 
Oh, yeah, okay. Now nah, we're good. I make my way home with the Rex, and I notice that with my current hatch speeds, I'm not going to make it home in time. I park my Rex on a little island on the river, and I wait for my new baby to come. Wow, that was gory. But hey, at least I got my new Rhino. I name him Sticky, and then I imprint him as best I can, considering I'm not even home to finish doing it. I place down some billboards to protect Sticky, and then I head home to finish leveling up to level 90 so I can make its saddle, and also make that industrial cooking pot. On my way there, I see a 130 Pteranodon, and well, I kinda do need something to fly around on with Bon Jovi gone. It's day 69. What? Were you expecting a joke or something? I craft up a saddle for my Pteranodon, and I name him Petey. I then begin to cull some Rexes for easy experiences. I need just a couple of more levels for both that cooker and the saddle. I gather and craft and expand and kill baby Rexes for a couple of days. On day 73, I went out to get some oil and organic polymer so I could craft up that long-awaited industrial cooker to make those healing brews so I could get into caves but I had a terrible time finding Pengu and his family. So I filled up my Thyla with as much obsidian as I could carry so I could just craft polymer at home. I stopped by and I whistled Sticky to follow me home. And once there, I crafted his long-awaited saddle and I took my first ever Rhino flight. These things are just awesome. I kind of regret not taming one sooner now that I think about it. Oh well, we can't change the past, so we carry on and fly back to the snow to get the rest of the oil that I'll need for the cooker. We returned home by morning and I crafted up that cooking pot. I'm so damn happy about this. Now I can craft bulk healing brews and safely navigate those caves. We are making real progress. Once I had enough brews, I grabbed Beast Jr. and I marched right for the central cave. I squeezed my way inside and I killed a raptor that followed me all the way in. I began making my way down the cave, and it's, honestly, it's not a very big and long cave by any means, but there is a ton of bats and spiders and dreaded arthropleura all the way down. I continue fighting my way down and I come across a loot crate, and after a small amount of time, the artifact room, where I killed even more bats and bugs, and then I finally claimed my first artifact. We are now one step closer to defeating the Broodmother. On my way out, I tamed a dung beetle and I took him home so I could craft my fertilizer. These guys got a fancy little upgrade. Now they auto collect poop even over their weight limit. That is so damn nice. I made it a cage out of habit and I put it in on Wander to convert that poop into fertilizer. I finished off the day by finishing my platform. In the morning, I set off to take on the Lower South Cave. Once I got in the area, it took me a few minutes to actually find it. Lower South Cave is always a little bit tricky to find when you don't go there that often. And with all the new changes to the island, I found myself not even recognizing where the hell I am, let alone the cave. Is that it? Oh my god. But this is it. Sick. Oh. After the archway, there's a cr valley. Go through the valley, and there it is. Okay. Boom. Easy to remember. I'll forget next time. I make my way down the cave. Since surprisingly, there's not a lot of creeps in my way. I wasn't long getting to the artifact room, and once I coaxed some spiders out, I was able to claim my prize. I opt to go up and out the other way, and get the notes on my way out. And I jumped in the pool to get myself some more fish meat, and I dig up something much bigger. Thanosuchus in this fucking cave, what? The fight was on, and this massive crocodile was just tearing my baryonyx apart. Blow after blow, we were both starting to get bloody, but I held my ground and just barely killed the Dinosuchus. Oh, fuck. It died. 
200 health left. It fucking died. It's time to go home with my artifact in hand. And as I'm traveling along... Oh, fucking Dylos. Fucking cocksucker. Ugh. Scared the shit out of me. So much for this trip going off without a hitch. I returned with Sticky to save Junior, and that Thyla gave me one hell of a fight. But in the end, we were victorious with the only loss being myself. Back at home, I place in my artifact into my trophy holder, and I show off my prize to all my dinos. They don't really seem to care. I move the Rexes around a little bit, and I level up their health just to give them a head start in healing up. I take a moment to get a garden going, and then I hatch out my remaining Rexes for my boss army. I spend the next two days imprinting, gathering, crafting Rex saddles, and leveling up my army to get ready to fight the Broodmother. When I notice a 140 over after, so I jumped off to try and pull it, when suddenly I angered a Theory. Excellently I aggroed the fucking Theory! Therum. Once the Theory was dealt with, I nailed the Bola on the over after, like a pro. And then I started tranking it out, when a damn Hyenodon came in to munch on some free meat. I quickly poke it with an arrow, and it took off. But my over after is nearly dead because of that stupid Hyenodon. Sitting there waiting for the Overraptor to recover just a little bit of health, the Bola wears off. And I instinctively give that Overraptor one more shot, and I, I killed it. Rest in peace, little guy. Once I get back to base, I see another Overraptor, and she's 135. Nice! Just to let you know, I installed the Better Spawns mod, or at least ASA's version of it. And unfortunately, I think the settings are a little bit skewed towards the high end, which is why I'm seeing so many high levels right now. I'm gonna fix this later. Just right now, I'm kind of enjoying the high levels. Sorry, not sorry. Once my Overaptor was up, I named her Steve. Great name for a female Overaptor, if I do say so myself. I put her in a cage and I enable wandering so I can boost passive egg generation. And I noticed that she picks up eggs. This is an even better upgrade than what the Dung Beetle has! Amazing! Good job, Wildcard. I am loving all of these little quality of life upgrades that you've added thus far. Now that I have that lovely little over after, all that I need to do is get that last artifact. The artifact of the massive. It's in the lava cave. And rather than run there on foot with Junior, I decided to transport him there with Sticky. And as we were nearing our destination, Sticky required a moment of rest, so I took a moment to enjoy the beautiful ocean view. And damn, I kind of regret not building on the shore. Maybe in the next 100 days. We arrive just before nightfall, and we make our way in. And down a very long tunnel before it opens up into a fork in the road, where there's lots of things wanting to eat us. This is going to be a long cave run if I gotta heal every single fight. I take the left path and I head down that way since I normally take the right path in this cave. And I make my way across a narrow bridge, a very deadly trap if a bat were to hit us and knock us off. I take a look around for some loot as I go and I don't see anything and I carry on down the path making my way deeper until I got to a jump gap. Once across, I go around a couple of more bends, and I finally find the artifact. After I heal up Junior a bit, I attempt to pull some of the stray bats with my long neck rifle. But the rocks were preventing me from hitting them, so I grapple across and hope the hell they don't aggro. Whew, we got the artifact. Easy peasy. I wasn't worried. Back at home, I made up some more healing brews and I finished saddling all of my Rexes and leveling them up some more. I then set out so I could find a Yudi to ride in the boss fight. They have this amazing ability where they boost damage output and increase damage resistance on Tames by screaming at them. It's beautiful. But as I was looking around, I came across a 145 Deodon fighting a Mammoth. I could use one of those because they have a healing ability. 
and it would be so much faster to heal my Rexes with a Deodon than manually feeding them with meat. While waiting for my pig to tame up, I set off to find that damn beauty finally. And I came across a 145. Damn, am I just getting some luck today or is it that mod? Haha! <laughs> Time for a big brain move though, and I place down my billboards and test them with Sticky. I then scoop up the beauty and drop it in. Okay, I can get out. <laughs> of course I rage! I fix the billboard so that way hopefully it can't escape again. And then I see that my Deodon is up so I went over to recover him real quick. Now that I had him back at the trap, safe and sound with me, it's time to tame that beauty. It appears that my trap is working better now. I begin to track her out when I see some movement near my Deodon out of the corner of my eye. So I go to save my Deodon from the sabers when my Yudi Houdini's out of the trap when I wasn't looking. And I pick her up and I take a moment to let her heal up in one of the sabers bodies. And then I put her back in the trap and she Houdini's out of it again. After putting her back in again, she wasn't long going down. Down it goes. Not gonna lie, the fact that it molds to whatever it crashes into has got to be amazing. Except for the fact that its head's disappearing in the ground. That's weird. And I killed and fed her the carnal friends that she had. That way she won't have to miss them and wonder what they're up to. I then took my dad on home while she was taming up. I hit up some drops while I was waiting. I then returned to my UD to find that it's now under the mesh. Great! So I do the only thing I can do, and I ghost in. <laughs> cheat ghost for the win! The big thing here to remember is if you're going to use this cheat, also remember to use cheat walk once you're done. Or when you land, you will fall into eternity. If somebody doesn't like that I saved my Yudi, fuck you. I don't give a shit. I need some more pearls, so I set off to find some beaver dams, and I accidentally discovered that the Rhino can float on water. I knew they could swim, but this is amazing. My good old buddy, I don't skate, helped me find pearls in the wild. Like I said earlier, they no longer glow anymore, and it just makes them really difficult to see. Look, I even passed by one looking at it, even though he told me they were no longer glowing. I spent the next couple of days leveling and healing up my Rexes and getting them ready to fight the Broodmother. And by day 90, I'm honestly, I'm just bored. So I gather them all up and I prepare to march them to the Green Obelisk. But I'm going to have them all in aggressive so they can maximize any extra experience along the way. It was an absolute challenge getting them to the obelisk this way. They were constantly getting hung up and stuck on everything, running around, doing whatever the hell they want, and killing everything. Just like the good old days of Ark Survival Evolved. I make it to the obelisk finally and I see a giant problem walking around. So I put all of my tames on passive. I do not need to lose any of them to stupidity at this point. Walk them across the bridge one to two at a time until they were all on the platform. But looking around, I felt like I was short a few Rexes. I knew I had misplaced my dead on, but the Rexes, come on. So, I grapple up and I parachute down to my Deodon. Once I got on my Deodon, I used Ark's new tracking to locate four of the mixing Rexes. One of whom never even left home. My bad. <laughs> I headed back home with my Deodon so I could grab Sticky. Whistled the first Rex and I flew to the next Rex. And I headed back towards the green op. I decided to let them munch on things along the way a little bit, so that way they could catch up to the others. 
Once I got back, the last of them were just stuck outside the green obelisk, and I picked them up with Sticky and I dropped them off at the terminal, completely forgetting that they were unaggressive, and one of them went in to say hi to that titanosaur. Guess I'm down one Rex for the fight. All I got left to do now is heal them up and get them in a nice circle around the terminal, and I'll be ready to fight the Broodmother. I honestly wasn't sure if I was going to make it this far at the rate things were going. I decided while I was healing up the Rexes to test the old render trick for the Deodon, and it works. So what this render trick is, is if the tame is hungry and you leave render, it will eat all available food until its food is full or there's no food left to eat, making Deodon healing so much quicker. And I'm really glad that this trick still works. By day 95, I had all my Rexes healed up, and I started placing them into the teleportation circle. But once that was done, I moved on, flying from drop to drop to drop to drop, trying to find some better loot. In all honesty, I was just wasting time until day 100. And in all of the loot drops that I checked, I didn't find anything of real use to me at this point. But hey, maybe if I did it 200 days, which would depend on how successful this video does, of course. 10,000 likes? Yeah, that, 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 that should be enough to convince me to do it 200 days. And since we're at it, I also wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching this far. You are awesome. And as small message to my Patreons, I do apologize. I forgot to name dinos after you guys, and I'm really sorry, and I'll figure out a way to somehow make it up to you guys in the next 100 days. Now, are you ready? I jump on my Yudi and I whistle my Rexes in for the attack, and then I begin to buff them up. They charge into the Spider Queen, ripping large chunks of chitin from her as I run around and buff. Well, she's going down fast. What do you expect? It's Gamma. Not that much of a challenge. Blame Wildcard for the boring boss fight. I'm doing the best I can here. Hey, I'll try to do something more challenging in the next one. I hope you enjoyed this, and hey, check out my 100 days to beat the island with all of the bosses from Ark Survival Evolved in one map. I know, it's crazy. Anyways, bye! Nice. Easy peasy. Yeah, they're hardly even bloody. They did better than I thought they would.